All right. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, quick introductions. My name is Alice, and I am an Emissary Ingress Maintainer. I'm Flynn. I'm also an Emissary Ingress Maintainer, but I do not work for Ambassador Labs anymore. I'm now at Buoyant. Just in case anybody was wondering why I'm wearing the Linkerd t-shirt. Cool. So just to get started, I'm um, going to set the agenda. We're basically just going to go over some intro about Emissary Ingress, some recap about what we have worked on, get into a bit about how you configure Emissary Ingress, what are the benefits and stuff about why we chose the way we did to configure it, uh, talk a little bit about the 3.x major version we released since the last KubeCon, talk a bit about the path to the next version of CRDs, and then lastly, mention a bit about Envoy Gateway, what's been going on with that, and what our plans for the future are. So to get started, what is Emissary Ingress? Well, it is an API gateway. So you've got your backend services that are sitting in your Kubernetes cluster. You've got your users that are sitting outside the cluster. And you've got Emissary, which is the main gateway, the front door into the cluster. All that traffic is going to be going through Emissary from externally into the backend services. So. That is the primary thing that your end users are going to be communicating with. Emissary basically consolidates all of the things you want an API gateway to do into a single control point. So a bit more detail on what it looks like in the cluster. So as a background, Emissary focuses primarily on providing a self-service developer-centric experience for controlling the gateway. Uh, emissary is powered by Envoy Proxy, so Emissary is going to be sitting in your cluster, it's going to be listening and watching for resource updates, and then it is going to be spinning up and configuring an Envoy Proxy. So outside traffic is going to be talking directly with that Envoy Proxy that is managed and configured by Emissary, and that's going to get the traffic to your backend services. Like I mentioned, Emissary is an API gateway, but it is not just a proxy. Emissary Ingress also does authentication and as well as lots of other cool control patterns for traffic. So let's say we've got two users here. We've got Jane and we've got Mark, and they both want to access the service. You can inspect things that are more than just the path, things like the HTTP header, um, all sorts of different things. You can say like, hey, Jane's going to go to this service, and Mark is going to go to this other service. We also support extensions for authentication. So let's say Jane wants to update something on the application, and Mark does too. We're going to talk to that extension for authentication first. We're going to say, OK, Jane is allowed to perform that update, but Mark gets banished to the Shadow Realm. So beyond authentication, we've also got extensions for observability, things like tracing, uh, rate limiting, and resilience patterns. A lot of this is overlap with service meshes, but that is okay. Each one performs a very different job depending on that north, south, and east-west traffic patterns. A little bit more info about the specific features of Emissary. On the resilience side, we've got things like timeouts, uh, circuit breaking, and retries. And there are also extension points for authentication with the extra auth protocol, and then rate limiting with the RLS proto. On observability, like I mentioned, we've got support for distributed tracing, and we've got tons of great metrics that are provided by Envoy. So you can do things like setting up a Grafana dashboard and monitoring those metrics to see what's going on with your services. Like I said, Emissary Ingress is powered by Envoy. That is the core of what it does and how it gets traffic to your backend services. You may have heard about this thing called Edge Stack. That's not the focus of this talk, but just so you're aware of what the relationship is, Edge Stack is basically Emissary Ingress, but with some additional features built on top of it. Anything you hear Edge Stack might be capable of, Emissary is more than capable of on its own. You just might have to do a little bit of legwork to build those things out yourself. So going into the recap over the last two years, what has been going on with the project? In 2021, we were previously called uh, Ambassador API Gateway. Then we donated the source code to the CNCF and renamed it to Emissary Ingress. We also had the major version 2.0 in 2021 and major version 3.0 in 2022. 
We've introduced new CRD versions. If you've been a long time user of the product, you will probably be familiar with, we've got a bunch of different ones. Latest one is V3 Alpha 1. We've made improvements to our integrations with service meshes like Linkerd, Istio, and Console. And most recently with that 3.0 major version upgrade, we've got support for HTTP 3 to downstream clients right now. In the future, we'll probably support it for upstream clients, but right now it is just downstream connections. We've had a ton of releases, a ton of commits, and we really appreciate everyone who's gotten involved, tried out the product, given us feedback, and contributed to it. For 3.y, the major points were bringing Envoy up to date. So we were running a much outdated version of Envoy, 1.17. We brought that all the way up to 1.23. And mostly that is bug fixes, security, and stability improvements. We also had to drop support for your Envoy's v2 API. They made that choice. We were kind of forced on that. But that should mostly be transparent to the users. Beyond that, we upgraded a bunch of our dependencies. We're also now on the latest version of Go, upgraded our Python and a bunch of other parts of the container. Like I said, we've got that new support in the 3.x series for HTTP3 to downstream clients. And one major contributor I wanted to call out was Paul Salabria, who added support for custom tags and tracing services. I'm gonna give it over to Flynn and he's gonna talk a bit about configuring Emissary Ingress. Thank you. So Alice mentioned early on here about developer-centric self-service configuration. That's been a focus. That's been a focus of Emissary Ingress since its start back in 2017. Let's see. There we go. Sorry. All right. <clears throat> This is an example of how you would, some of the things that you can do when configuring uh, a configuring emissary. This is actually a complete emissary configuration to have emissary listening for TLS traffic on port 8443, doing TLS with that, assuming that you are using the hostname foo.example.com and then routing traffic with the slash quote slash path prefix over into a quote service. If you were to look under the hood, you would find that this generated an Envoy config that is at least hundreds, if not a thousand lines long. You probably do not want to be actually messing with the Envoy config in this one. The emissary configuration here is much more palatable. You can do this with the Ingress resource, and that Ingress resource is roughly equivalent. Uh, there's a couple of things that are minor, minorly different here, but those two, the three CRDs on the left and the Ingress resource on the right are roughly equivalent. It's a little bit challenging though in operations to be doing this all with the same CRD. Uh, you end up where if you have multiple people, so for example, if you decide that you want to change something about the TLS certificate, uh, while somebody is trying to change the path of the mapping, you're both going to be trying to edit the same resource at the same time and things can get complex. So that makes it a little bit tricky to do the whole self-service thing. And now this has decided that it's just not gonna work. All right, I'll use the keyboard. One of the things that's nice about this particular configuration language is if you separate out the mappings and then the other stuff more on the infrastructure side, the way we've done, you also get to separate those roles as people are working at this in operations. So you can do all of this with just one person where you've got a single person going through and dealing with all the mappings, dealing with the listeners, dealing with the host, the authentication service, the rate limit service, everything else. But it's very, very easy to separate this into two roles or more so that you can have the developers of your application worrying about mappings and then have separate people filling the more ops-centric role trying to go through and worrying about the more infrastructure-y sorts of things. This is something that's been baked into Emissary literally since the start in 2017. It has been very important for a bunch of the adoption that we've got. This has end up, ended up resonating a lot with a bunch of users. Enough so that it's kind of fallen into being a best practice, at least in our heads. If you look at computing as a whole, computer engineering as a whole, we know very well how to deal with four or five developers on a team. We kind of know okay how to deal with two or three dozen on a team. 
by the time you're into the hundreds on it, the hundreds of people who are all trying to work on the same sort of thing, pretty much the only way we know how to do this well is with microservices, where you arrange things so that you have different teams working on different chunks of the thing, all going independently, all having an independent release train. This is really interesting because it requires that you separate those concerns out very nicely. And it also requires that if you really want the most benefit from it, you have to have all those teams able to work at full speed without getting bottlenecked either on each other or getting bottlenecked on operations. This ends up requiring a lot of trust where you kind of have to trust, your developers will have to trust that operations is going to do the right thing and provide them all of the platform stuff that they need to get their things done. Operations will in turn need to trust that the developers are going to be operating in good faith, trying to work on their things and trusting the ops guys to do the platforms things. Uh, everybody ends up benefiting from trust going both directions, which is interesting because there are a lot of ways also where historically these two roles in a lot of ways and at a lot of times don't find that trust to be natural. You don't have to do that trust blindly, of course. Kubernetes RBAC is a great tool for going through and putting guardrails around things so that the developers can only mess with the developer sorts of things, the operators can only deal with the operator sorts of things. Um, I'm gonna call out the kubectl sudo command as well. We've been using that one, or I guess y'all have been using that at Ambassador Labs for a while to great effect. Uh, it's a way you can basically set things up so that normally you're just doing your normal stuff with your normal kubectl account, but if you need to, you can switch over and impersonate a higher privilege account long enough to get something done. There's a full audit trail so that everybody can go back and make sure that the right things have happened. Kubernetes in general makes the whole audit trail thing really easy. You can always go through and pull the configuration out. Logical extension of that idea is the whole GitOps infrastructure as code thing. Uh, and likewise, Argo CD, all that sort of stuff. But all of these really get back to constructing a way where your different teams get to trust each other, to support each other, where you can have guardrails, but you can still have everybody working at full speed without having to be blocked on each other. It is a lot of effort, but that's okay, it's worth it. All right, any questions about any of that so far before we talk a little bit about the version three CRDs and where those are going? All right. Just as, in general, we're gonna be hanging out afterwards. You can always come up and talk to us afterwards. I expect that we will end up with time for questions at this point. So, let's talk a little bit about the V3 CRDs. And we probably get to slow down quite a bit at this point too, so. Okay. If you take a look at these CRDs, you will notice that they all say getambassador.io slash V3 alpha one. There's been a lot of discussion about the transition from getambassador.io slash v1 to getambassador.io slash v2 to getambassador.io slash v3 alpha one to, oh great, v3 final is coming, what should we do with that? We already are pretty sure about a couple of things that we want to do with this transition. One of them is a lot of cleanup stuff. If you look over at that YAML over on the right, you'll see a bunch of things where we have fields that are named with underscores in snake case. Um, so we know we want to shift those things over to camel case because it would be kind of nice to do that the way the entire rest of the ecosystem does. Sorry about that. Uh, we know, for example, that we would like to be using durations instead of having things named with underscore MS or underscore S or whatever, right? We know that there are some fields that are deprecated but still present now. A good one is there's a use WebSockets field that we really should just throw away entirely. You can already use allow upgrades WebSocket, and we recommend that. But at some point, the use WebSockets field is going to go away. Likewise, host and host regex get combined into a single host name regex thing. And so you know, there are quite a few things like this that live in the CRDs as they stand right now. And. I am going to let Alice go ahead and talk about other stuff on the way to V3. Over to you. Thank you. 
So yeah, a couple other consistency improvements we want to make to the CRDs when we're going to V3 final is that we've got a bunch of different services like the auth service, the log service, mappings. These are all things that result in Envoy cluster creation. But what's inconsistent about them is that you don't necessarily have these same convict options through our CRDs. So one thing we'd like to standardize is across any resource that lets you configure, for example, Envoy Cluster is just one example. Um, you should be able to configure the exact same things like timeouts, stat settings, etc., across all of these different CRDs. So there's not this uh, disconnect where a mapping allows you to configure one field, but another um, CRD that creates a similar Envoy resource does not allow you to configure the same field. Or in instances where maybe the field is being configured in both resources, but the naming and how you configure them in our CRDs is inconsistent. So that's something we'd like to fix. What is the path going to look like for V3? Um, well, we're probably going to be doing a V3 beta 1 sometime soon. We're not really firmly committed to any sort of a timeline on this. We are mostly just watching around what the community is letting us know about the V3 alpha 1 CRDs, changes that they would like to make, uh, we introduced some of those things that we'd want to mention, um, sorry, that Flynn mentioned in the previous slide we want to change, such as the inconsistencies in the snake casing that we want to do. Um, that was brought up in last Valencia KubeCon, so we haven't heard a lot of feedback about that one. We were in the other. We're going to take that as that this is something the community is okay with, but um, we're always having conversations with people trying to figure out what are the things that people like and don't like about our CRDs, what changes do people want to see, what things do they want us to not change. Um, we may or may not end up doing a V3 beta 2. That's just going to depend on priority and what all goes into V3 beta 1 and what we want the V3 final CRD to look like. Main thing to draw attention to is that we are currently still supporting the V2 CRDs. Um, we actually dropped support for the V1 CRDs earlier this year, but we are going to probably end up bringing support for V1 CRDs back just because we've heard there have been some friction points with us dropping support for them. So main thing going forward is just that all the resources you've created, all the CRDs you might already have if you're a current user of Emissary, those aren't going to become invalid. You're not going to have to go and recreate all these things. We're going to support these versions moving forward, but we're going to try to make new versions of the CRDs cleaner. Um, so the storage version is not going to change to V3 final until we release V3 final. So if you're just coming out with like V3 beta 1, V3 beta 2, those are never going to be storage versions. Main thing to focus on here is just that if you are a user of Emissary or if you're interested in it, we'd love everyone's feedback on any changes they want to see or do not want to see in the CRDs. If you feel strongly about that, then please create a GitHub issue, reach out to us on Slack. We'd love to hear from you. Another thing I want to touch on really quickly is that a lot of people who have been using the product for a long time may have been aware of the friction from the 1.x to 2.x major version migration, particularly around the CRDs. Thankfully, we have learned a lot in that time, so we are trying to make sure that every other major version bump going forward is not as, is not as much pain as that 1.x to 2.x jump was. Also, there's this thing called Envoy Gateway. Um, this was announced in KubeCon Valencia this year, so there has been a ton going on with this project. Some quick recap about Envoy Gateway. What does this mean for Emissary Ingress? So, as I mentioned, we are built on top of Envoy Proxy. Eventually, once we feel like Envoy Gateway is in a good spot where it's pretty feature complete and stable, we will start to transition to Emissary Ingress being built on top of Envoy Gateway instead of on top of Envoy Proxy directly. So what is the kind of driving factor for doing this? We've got two major CNCF projects that are API gateways. There's Emissary Ingress and there's Contour. There's also a bunch of other people that have interest in the API gateway space and opinions about how things should go or people who are working on similar projects. We want to bring as many people as possible who are working on these different things that are duplicating a lot of that API gateway effort that is just like watching resources, updating the Envoy config, translating from like CRDs to XDS config. That's a lot of, con that's a lot of uh, effort that's being duplicated across these various different projects. So the goal with Envoy Gateway is to bring in a lot of these people who have developed expertise over 
the life cycle of these projects and get everyone to focus on building one common core that we can all share, and that's going to be Envoy Gateway. So it's better to work, to work together to build something solid from the ground up rather than duplicating that effort and having a bunch of different competing APIs and standards. This also doesn't mean emissary ingress is going away. There's a bunch of things that Envoy Gateway is not going to do that emissary ingress is going to continue to do. We have already been working on both in parallel. I am a maintainer of emissary and Envoy Gateway, so we're going to make sure that the project is shaping up to where we can definitely use it and make it an improvement for all the users of emissary. You're not going to see emissary be replaced by Envoy Gateway, and we're not going to stop working on emissary. So like I said, long term, we're just going to eventually support Envoy Gateway as the core of Emissary Ingress. Initially, we're just going to start by using bits and pieces of it as an API. So that way, when we feel like Envoy Gateway is doing something particularly well, we can integrate a little bit of it so it's one piece at a time instead of one big jump from Envoy Proxy to Envoy Gateway. We've been working with them to ensure that everything that we need to accomplish as emissary ingress is possible with Envoy Gateway and that Envoy Gateway doesn't become a limiting factor. So like I said, there are certain things that Envoy Gateway won't do. That's where emissary ingress is going to come in. Envoy Gateway is only going to support the Gateway API CRDs and only Kubernetes resources. So emissary ingress supports, for example, the console service resolution. That's something Envoy Gateway has no interest in doing and emissary will continue to do. Emissary will continue to support its existing CRDs so all that stuff that we just talked about isn't going to become invalid once we accept Envoy Gateway as our core. You're not going to be forced to switch to Gateway API series if you don't want to. And I'm going to hand it off to Flynn for some recap. Thank you. All right. So, MS Area is always focused on developer-centric self-service ingress configuration simply because it's a great way to let everybody get things done more quickly. This takes a lot of trust. It is worth it. It does work really well. And, you know, the trust is a good thing in the first place, right? Um, if you are a new adopter or if you're going through and adding things to your emissary ingress configurations, use V3 Alpha 1. It will be happier and nicer and it'll be a smoother transition to V3 Final when it comes out. Even though V2 is still supported, and as Alice mentioned, we're actually bringing back support for V1 just to remove some migration friction that people are experiencing. Um, I think that's the next dot Y that that'll be in, right? Um, we are involved in the Envoy Gateway. Alice is a maintainer, Luke's also a maintainer. I show up and heckle a lot, but I'm not a maintainer. Uh, we're involved in Envoy Gateway because we believe it's a win for everybody. Arranging it so that we and com the console folks are not constantly duplicating the same stuff over and over and over and over again frees everybody up to really do more things that are new and different and interesting. This is a good thing. Emissary Ingress will still stick around because there are ways that Emissary Ingress gets to add value on top of that. Likewise, I expect console will still stick around because there are contour. Did I just say console a minute ago? Contour. Ever so sorry to all the fine people who work on console and Contour. Um, yeah, I expect that Contour will also still stick around because it too will be adding value for its customers in ways that the Envoy Gateway is not going to want to do. Community stuff. I said this in Valencia. I said this before in Barcelona. It's, there's no possible way that Emissary Ingress would have made it this far without the community. Many, many thanks. Much appreciated. You can find the two of us if you want to get involved with development or if you want to ask questions or if you want to provide feedback or if you just want to say hi. You'll be able to find both of us on the community Slack at a8r.io slash slack. That is very hard to say. She's at Alex Wasco. I'm at Flynn. And um, yeah, thanks. Note Alice at datawire.io, but Flynn at buoyant.io. And I think we have what? Five, 10 minutes for questions. So, any questions? And we're also gonna be sticking around afterwards, so if you just wanna come up and talk, then instead of shouting your question out, that's fine too. Hi, thanks for the talk. 
If uh, somebody's running Istio for east-west traffic, is there a way for Ambassador to route directly to pods, or would it need to be like a have its own Istio sidecar? There are a lot of answers to that question. Um, as of, I mean, I know I'm going to get the Istio versions wrong, but for a little while now, it has been possible to have emissary watch the MTLS configuration for Istio and then just simply participate in the Istio mesh without having to be fully meshed in with its own sidecar from Istio, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm pretty sure that you can do it by injecting emissary fully into the Istio mesh, but if you do, you have to make sure that you change the Envoy base ID for one of them, either Istio or emissary. So in most situations, it's gonna be simpler just to let emissary watch the TLS configuration and do it that way. Does that answer the question? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Try it, let us know what, it's at, what happens. Anything else? I've got a question. Um, get ambassador in the URL there for the, any, any chances that's gonna change? Ooh, that is a lovely, lovely question. Um, CRD. Well, actually, that's a good question. Are you talking about in the CRD definition or are you talking yeah. about the URL? Yeah, in the, in the CRD. Yeah. yeah, okay. So there was a fair amount of discussion about that, and the conclusion was that it was probably more of a headache than it was worth for existing users to change all of their API groups. <laughs> um, I see some nods in the audience. It would be technically possible to support both sort of, but we've never heard from anybody that that was a real thing that the community wanted. So if you are in the community and you do want this, let us know. Um, otherwise, nobody, everybody seems to be looking at it as, oh my God, this would be awful for migration. Any other questions? Anything else? I don't want to hog the mic, but I've got another one. Is the, um, is the Envoy gateway a wrapper around the Envoy proxy or a rewrite? So it's meant to be a wrapper around the Envoy proxy. Um, actually, we just had our first um, functional release of Envoy gateway just a couple days before KubeCon. Um, if you weren't able to attend the Envoy gateway talk, um, main features of that is that um, Envoy gateway will spin up a bunch of um, Envoy proxies um, as a fleet. It uses the Gateway API. So while Emissary has, um, it configures Envoy by um, being the, in the same container where you've got like one pod, it contains both the processes for Emissary Ingress and Envoy. Um, Envoy Gateway actually has separate deployments. You've got like your main Envoy Gateway deployment that will listen for like Gateway resources, which will instruct it to create Envoy proxy deployments that it will manage. Got it. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you guys very much. Yep. Thanks for everyone coming. <laughs>